to begin with. Life is a strange affair, and it is a rare person who genuinely finds it easy. Many of us go through life as if in constant risk of drowning. The events of life, great and small, come at us so insistently and continuously that often we are swept onwards by a seemingly endless stream of activity, leaving us with the feeling that we do no more than spend our time simply trying to keep our heads above water. Now and then, we may wonder whether this is all there is, if this is all that life can offer, but then we are carried off by the next wave of mundanity, our thoughts and feelings firmly centered around our existence in this world. Even if we are able to keep our cool, observing the ongoing processes of life with a detached mind, it does not stop the waves from rolling in. We do not understand how and whence they arise, nor how to control them, and we find ourselves unable to step out of the water. So, we may wonder, does all this energy, activity, and busyness have a meaning, a purpose, or a goal? Or is it just unmitigated and unorchestrated chaos? The product of chance and mechanical laws of nature that have arisen spontaneously out of nothing? Some say that the goal of life is to be happy. Yet although we may believe the pursuit of happiness to be an unalienable right, we hardly know what happiness is, still less how we may find it. Some seek happiness in friends and family, some in the fulfillment of ambition, some in the acquisition of wealth and material possessions, some in the pursuit of pleasure, some in music and the arts, some in helping others, some in worthy causes, some in philosophy, science, or religion. There are many such avenues, and they are not mutually exclusive. But is the meaning of life to be found in them? And if so, who or what created life with such a bizarre purpose? How did all this come about? If we consider it, we will realize that birth and death are mysteries, and so too is the time between that we call life. Even the most elaborate descriptions and explanations do not really tell us what is going on, nor, more significantly, do they tell us who it is that is having the experience. What are we? Who am I? Who or what is this consciousness that is looking for happiness and seeking an answer to life's conundrums? It seems reasonable to presume that the best way to discover whether or not life has a meaning is to explore the nature of life itself, and in particular, the nature of our own inner consciousness. For it is through our consciousness that we experience life and know ourselves to be alive. But how to set about such an endeavor? Clearly, the answer and the way to address such a subjective quest must lie within ourselves. We cannot expect to find it in a book or blazoned across the sky, or even in the amazing discoveries of science, for scientific revelations only add further to the mystery. So is there a means by which the answer can be sought within ourselves? Have others already done so and resolved this mystery for themselves? Can we develop a state of consciousness in which our innermost nature and all that is presented to it by what we call life are clearly understood? not in words or concepts, but by direct apprehension, understanding everything for what it truly is? Is there such a state as enlightenment? And, please, can we experience just a hint of such a state to give us confidence that we are on the right track? The answer to these fundamental inquiries is an emphatic, yes. Indeed, it is a constant theme in human history a perennial philosophy appearing at all times, in all cultures, and in all parts of the world. It has been said so many times and in so many ways that there is indeed a higher reality that can be experienced by ordinary human beings, and that this experience brings with it an understanding of what life is all about. In fact, there is an entire area of human study that is devoted to the exploration and experience of our innermost self. 
In general terms, it is known as spirituality or mysticism, and the adepts of this inner science are known as mystics. What then do these mystics say? They tell us, very simply, that the higher reality is a transcendent, universal, unlimited, and boundless spirit, referred to by many names, the most common being God. And as a part of this grand picture, these mystics also observe that we human beings are actually spiritual beings who have got ourselves entangled in material existence. If they are right, then the purpose of life is clear, to rediscover our innate spiritual nature and our true relationship with the divine. This is the higher and all-encompassing reality that we seek, which will make sense of life. To unveil this reality for ourselves is the ultimate aim of the many forms of spiritual practice found throughout the world's religious and spiritual traditions. In their highest form, these practices are known generically as meditation or contemplation. By these means, we slowly rediscover our inherent spirituality and at the same time develop an increasing realization of its universal nature. And an aspect of this understanding is that the purpose of life is indeed the quest for happiness, but for a higher happiness than is found in external, material things and activities, even if they are of an ennobling nature. For we come to understand that the spirit itself is pure happiness, bliss, beauty, and love within us and around us, and that the more we experience ourselves as spirit, the closer we find ourselves to the divine, the source of all joy, and that the search for happiness in material existence is really the misguided and misdirected longing of our innermost being for the innate spiritual joy and bliss that are its natural heritage. Yet, for a variety of reasons, spiritual evolution takes time, and it is only slowly that this understanding grows in us. But we are not left bereft. The spirit within is not unaware of our purpose, for it is the source of our intent, and by way of encouraging our slow and plodding progress, there are moments when it chooses to manifest itself suddenly and unexpectedly, flooding our consciousness with inspiration from the unseen source. These moments of revelation are hints of the divine that well up from the inexhaustible wealth of spirit that lies within. They are experiences in which we become aware of the all-pervading presence of the divine, blessings whose purpose is to spur us on to greater effort, to discover who we truly are.